have sort of a cliche idea about what psychedelic means, and of course we first think about the drugs for which the term was coined, uh, but then we think about the music, uh, Grateful Dead, you know, we think about swirling amoeba lights, we think about um, Inagata De Vida, maybe, but uh, psychedelic, the word literally means mind manifesting. Um, or psyche manifesting. Thinking of it that way, um, all art is psychedelic. So what's different about psychedelic art, I would say basically is a, maybe a level of weirdness, <laughs> okay? Kind of a magical uh, view of reality. We, we have a selection here of classically psychedelic art, actually music posters from the 1960s, uh, but we also have a lot of um, other art that's just a little bit eerie, it's a little bit strange, it's a little bit challenging in different ways. You know, the psychedelic paradigm is typified by uh, very powerful encounters with, we could say, archetypes um, or certain themes, matters of life and death, sex and desire, the recognition that we're interconnected. The, the different uh, categories of art if you will, um, that I'm calling psychedelic here. We've got themes of eroticism. Um, we have uh, sort of visual puns and humor. We have, you know, classically surreal, eerie sort of surreal images. We just have straight up weird stuff. Um, and I think you, you put it all together and uh, my hope is that the viewer starts to have these themes kind of bouncing, pinging back, if you will, around the room and you're seeing things in, in the various works that tie together or generate new thoughts. So this is a Tibetan Tonka. Tonka is a religious painting. Um, we might think of it as, a, as an icon, maybe in a different tradition. Um, and there are themes um, that are explored in these Tonkas uh, and they're used for meditation uh, and teaching purposes. So this is the Wheel of Life. Uh, it's a t uh, contemporary tanka by a Tibetan artist who lives in Santa Fe. So this is a work called Sunyata's Temple by Carlos Quinto Kim, uh, a New Mexico artist. Um, and what you see here is, well, number one, uh, it's a depiction of a temple, what he's calling a temple, uh, sort of an imaginary or fictional sacred space. So that's one aspect of the psychedelic experience that's pretty consistent throughout is this kind of revelation of a spiritual underpinning to reality. This is a work uh, by Horse Towner Pierce. Um, it actually predates um, what we might call, you know, the psychedelic era. It's from 1952, uh, but it's to me, it's really eerily contemporary looking. Um, this was done towards the end of his life and he had been involved with the Transcendental Painting Group um, in um, New Mexico in the 1930s and 40s. And I think that capacity to see beyond uh, these sort of strange differences and find harmony um, in, in the collision of, we of weird things. I, that's a transcendental kind of quality and that's very much a psychedelic sort of uh, quality as well. I kind of think of this as the body group or the erotic group. So I think in uh, Patrick's piece we get this real mix. It's kind of seedy, it's a little bit uh, disturbing. So we get the kind of, I don't know, freaky side of being embodied in these bodies that we have and their impulses, which can really feel odd and a little bit alien sometimes. Here we, we really enter into the realm of dreams and it has this very strange twist on the erotic impulse where you have the artist, Anne Noggle herself, um, as a character here, sort of being waited upon by, you know, this, this hunky um, erotic icon male figure. So, it's a really, really eerie and strange. So this side's kind of got the dark, and this side I think of as being more whimsical and kind of lighthearted. Anchoring uh, the exhibit under the influence is this selection of posters um, that's part of a larger gift that uh, Dr. James Gunn 
recently donated to the museum of nearly 300 uh, posters, postcards, and other printed artifacts. While there are a few works that um, sort of fall through the 70s and a couple even in the early 80s, primarily the work is all from about 1966 to 1970, which is really the heyday of the psychedelic era. This, you know, quiet, maybe the least exciting visually poster um, in the selection is, as an artifact, probably the most important. This is a poster by Rick Griffin for The Human Bean, which was an, a free public event, a massive event in Golden Gate Park in uh, January of 1967. And you can see on the bill, Timothy Leary, Richard Alpert, Allen Ginsberg, Michael McClure, Gary Snyder, these are the major counterculture f figures of the era. It was this, you know, real gathering of the tribes and uh, really led to the Summer of Love that happened just a few months later. So what I've tried to do with this selection is uh, pull out some of the most famous images. This one may be the most famous um, poster of them all. This is a Grateful Dead poster from 1966 by Mouse Studios, which was a collaboration between Stanley Miller, aka Stanley Mouse, or Mouse, and Alton Kelly. This poster is so iconic because the Grateful Dead loved it and they, they adopted it as one of their you know, major marketing images. Um, they put it on uh, posters, t-shirts, and had, uh, had these uh, two artists actually do a number of their, record, their more famous record covers um, in the 1970s. This is one of my favorite of the you know, classic psychedelic artist, Victor Moscoso. Um, he went to the Yale School of Art, so he had this, you know, really, uh, you know, high-level training. He studied with Joseph Albers, who was one of the founders of the Bauhaus, and uh, Albers actually literally told him not to put complementary colors of the same value next to each other because it creates optical effects and uh, it's very intense. Um, and sort of enacting the hope I die before I get old ethos of the age, that's exactly what he did. That's all he did for the next 10 years. And you see it here, this wonderful psychedelic, you know, Austin Powers effect going on, you know, superimposed on this nude figure. It's a, and it's the doors, so how can you go wrong? This poster is um, from 1966, so a fairly early poster. Uh, it's by Wes Wilson, who basically invented the kind of melting bubble font, the like lava lamp lettering. And here he's sort of turning the letters more into uh, kind of like flame. What's really extraordinary about this poster and many of the other posters that we see in the collection is that uh, the value here is not placed on legibility, right? They, they actually uh, competed with one another to see how difficult to read they could make a poster. What they wanted for you to do was see this intense thing, cross the street, and spend 20 minutes trying to figure out what it said. Psychedelic art, it's about um, when that underlying reality gets exposed. So in this work by John Summers, a legendary Albuquerque printmaker and teacher, um, I think you get a real sense of that where it's almost as if the light that's trapped within matter starts to emerge out of these sticks and twigs and rocks and just kind of dead plant matter. Um, we, we start to see that everything's alive, everything truly is uh, infused with energy um, and it's just transiting from one state to another.